Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins. Today I've got another Distress Ink and Oxide cover combination for you and today we're looking at Speckled Egg. This for a long, long time has been one of my favourites. It was the first colour that I got the entire range, so the re the stain, all of the products in and I absolutely love it. So it is like a duck egg blue, kind of, I suppose if you consider duck egg blue, I know that can cover a range of different tones and shades. But what we're going to do is take a look at what it looks like when it's swatched onto cardstock. We're going to see what it looks like against other blues in the range, blues and teals. Um, and then we're going to do two color combinations using it, one with two colors and one with an additional three colors. So let's first of all start off by swatching this color. So uh, speckled egg, like I say, uh, it is a kind of a blue, a dusky blue, almost a grey blue. A hint of green in there, so it's a little bit teal-like. It's quite pale as well, but yeah, I just really, really love it. I have done for a very long time. I love the softness of it. It's perfect for a lot of different occasions. Let's just do a little bit more. Now today, just for a change, I'm working on watercolour cardstock, uh, just because that's what I grabbed at first so you can see there how lovely and soft it is now let's take a look at it compared to the label now bear in mind my label has got a splattering of something gray or brown or a bit of gold on there as well it's obviously been around while i've been uh, doing some sort of mixed media i should think but as you can see there i feel that uh, the swatch is a little more on the green side and a little bit paler than the label is or certainly my label is and when we're looking at the ink pad, the same again. Obviously paler, it's always going to be paler, but also uh, more green than uh, as blue as it seems on the ink pad. But let's just pop this aside and take a look at the colour chart. Now this chart is available for you to download on my website. It is blank, so you fill it in at home. It also includes a template if you want these perfect sort of rectangles to fill it in with. And it's a really good way of um, working out which colours you do and don't have already. You can mark them with I's and O's for inks and oxides. I know a lot of people actually recently just took something similar to this to uh, the local craft, sh I say the local, uh, the craft show in the UK so that if they wanted to buy any more they'd know what colours they've already got. Now obviously I've got the entire range now so mine's completely filled in. If you want to see all the colours not filled in, um, or rather filled in, but you've not got them, there is also one A4 sheet as an overview of all the colours that is filled in for you. You can also print that off. Everything that I've just mentioned, all of those downloads are completely free and they're all linked down below for you in the description. Uh, so let's take a look at Speckled Egg. Now you can see here the Speckled Egg um, here, it do, it does look uh, a lot darker actually. Uh, this is probably because I did it with my old brush, which was loaded up with ink. This is actually quite a new brush, so you can see it's nice and clean. So it still needs to have some more ink kind of embedded in it before it will apply quite as thickly as this. So that is actually looking quite a bit darker on there. So let's just compare actually these two together. So you can see the darkness is actually... A bit more there and also so is the color so it's not it doesn't seem quite as green as this version maybe I just need to load up the color a little bit more on here so I think I'm going to take it back and say actually the label is more accurate than I first thought so what other colors will this go with now uh, let's take a look now bear in mind this will be a little bit darker and a little more blue I would say tumbled glass is a pretty good um, match, although much more blue, primary sort of baby blue. Um, everything else along here is much darker. Uh, da -da, yeah, see, we're, we're there's very little salvage patina isn't too far off when you look at these two together rather than this one. Salvage patina is not far off either. Um, and then these are all, all these greens are much, much darker and much more green. So I would say if you're looking for another colour to do these combinations with because you don't have speckled egg or you just want to change it up a bit, have a go maybe with salvage patina as well. So let's pop these away and let's do those colour combinations. 
Now first things first, so that I'm as accurate as possible for you, I am just adding another layer of speckled egg over my swatch that I've done and that has brought it up a little bit darker. So then I'm going to do a tonal combination for you. This just means that we're going to run through this colour from light to dark um, and give you three colours that will sit really nicely beside that. So kind of different shades of the same colour almost. And I would say evergreen bow and pine needles, like so. I always have to check myself because I'm still learning how to say evergreen bow because bow isn't really a word that I've ever used before. Um, and I always wanted to call it bow, but I believe it's bow. <laughs> so I have been corrected, thank you. Anybody who did correct me, it's good to learn. So then I'm going in with the evergreen bow. I'm just popping this down first. Like I say, today I'm working on to watercolour cardstock, so the effects may be a little bit different. I'm also working with very clean brushes because I did get them, have them all washed. Um, that worked really, really well, but it does mean that I need to build up the colour now on each of my brushes because they're clean. It's like starting with new ones again. So look how Evergreen Bow works so nicely into Speckled Egg. Because Speckled Egg has that hint of green anyway, it just blends beautifully. Then I'm going to come into Pine Needles, a very dark green. And for some reason, my Pine Needles has glitter in on the ink pad as well, and I've no idea where the glitters come from. So again, I'm just going to build up the ink in my bristles. And this is part of the reason I don't often clean my brushes because I quite like when they've got ink sitting in them already. But this is because I do have one brush for every colour so I can allow this to happen. Obviously, if I was mixing my inks in my bristles, then I wouldn't be able to. Let's just come back to Evergreen Bow and go over that blend line. But to be honest, they've just blended absolutely beautifully on their own. So we've got from uh, Pine Needles, Evergreen Bow, and into Speckled Egg. Isn't that just gorgeous? Now I'm going to give my mat a wipe and I'm going to do a second colour combination. Now this one is going to be really quite different to the first. The only similarity is that we're going with Speckled Egg. There we go. Now I've started loading my brush up more. It is applying much better than it did in the first instance when we did the first swatch. So around about, I've just gone just kind of just over the a quarter of the way there because once you add your blending then that's going to pull back a little bit. I'm going to be adding another three colours. So first let's go with Tattered Rose which is a lovely soft colour also, a very very soft colour this one actually, um, but it does work really nicely into a speckled egg. Now being another pale colour that takes a little while to build up but as you can see there, it's just blended so nicely into the speckled egg. It's amazing that a blue and a pink can blend that one nicely together. But we're then going to go from the tattered rose into saltwater taffy. Now this is a stronger colour and it's a bit more on the pink side. So I need to be careful with this not to add too much and overpower the tattered rose. So coming back with Tattered Rose again, working in circles, lots on my brush, and I'm going to blend that line in there. I want to, like I say, I want to ensure that I'm not going too far into the Tattered Rose and completely losing it. There we go, I did miss the edge up here a little bit with the Saltwater Taffy. And lastly, I'm going to go into Ripe Persimmon, a very bright colour, a very, uh, if you're going to say coral, this is the really dark coral colour, but it is again equally beautiful. So again, do my blending, just coming back with my saltwater taffy here and going over the line there, giving that a nice blend between the two. And then I'm going to work this up and kind of off the swatch as well. So it gives that time to dry. But we've got another really lovely colour blend there. 
going from the really quite pale colours all the way up to the much, much deeper, darker, brighter colours there. But it's just a nice way to allow the blue to blend into warmer colours. Now you've got a little bit of dampness at the top there, which is why that looks such a fiery red. But as you can see from just here, as that dries, that will get that kind of cloudiness to it. And you'll get that sort of frosted look as well. But they are just so, so beautiful. So just waiting for that to dry, but you'll soon see how that will appear absolutely beautiful. It's hard to believe that these two have any colours together that are the same. But of course, we've got the top here and the bottom here. That just needs a little more blending there, which I can sit and do. <laughs> there we go. That didn't take long. That's not too bad. So... As I said, everything that I've used today is linked down below. You can also find the products just here, uh, including things like the blending brushes and such. Don't forget to check out the entire playlist just here. And of course, subscribe to my channel up here if you enjoy these videos. Thank you, everybody. Take care. I'll see you again very soon.